One of the things, shoot, sorry. Now he messed it all up. He's fallen down. I don't know, I need haircut. Maybe I need haircut. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. So I made a video about uh, cremation or scattering ashes and there were a lot of questions that came up out of that and I thought, that is great. In fact, I, I like truly, I thought the fact that, that this is um, a question that you know is maybe sensitive to some people, uh, uh, is a question that people might disagree on, I think it's really, really good because one of the things it highlights, I think it highlights, is that people are thinking about death. I don't think that as a cultural, generally speaking, we think about death as much as we ought to. I mean, it is the one thing every one of us is going to do at some point. And, it's, <laughs> and the moment of our death, of course, is kind of a big deal. It's because our life, your life matters, our life matters, therefore our eternity matters. And so the fact that people have an opinion about um, what are they gonna do with my body when I die is pretty great, I think. Um, and also I think people have an opinion about or they have a desire for what they, what they want others to do with their body. I think it highlights, and again, this might be me spinning some straw into gold um, or maybe even just kind of like putting a positive spin on it, but I really think that there's a possibility that uh, the fact that someone says, I, I desire this for my body, reveals that you recognize the body is you, which is the whole point of the church's teachings, right? It's that, that sense of saying that your soul is you, your body is you. Death is not, the soul is now free from the body. Death is, what <laughs> I remember Dr. Peter Crave called it an obscenity. Death is an obscenity. Why? Because think about all scary movies, not all of them, but many of the scary movies are about the body and soul separating. What's a ghost? It's a soul without a body. What is a, a um, zombie? A zombie is a body without a soul. That sense of, a mummy, same thing, there you go. Um, but, but that sense of my soul is not freed from my body, that's not a Catholic Christian way to look at it. My body and soul are separated. And that is, again, according to Dr. Peter Kraft, an obscenity. Because that's not how human beings are supposed to be. Human beings, what we are, are body and soul together. So we believe in the resurrection of the body. At some point in the future, <laughs> you and I are going to be uh, resurrected. We're, we're going to be reunited with our bodies, our souls and our bodies once again together. Jesus says some for the resurrection of, of glory, right? And some for the resurrection of damnation. But every one of us will spend eternity back in our bodies, body and soul together. Now, um, at the same time, Again, while I said that sometimes people having an opinion on this whole thing can reveal that uh, they recognize the goodness of the body. That could be the case. It also, and I just propose this with as much gentleness as possible, there can kind of be a certain my way. Like, and I just, this is what I want, what they're gonna do with my body, with my cremains when I die. That's kind of a problem. That's kind of a problem. Now, someone could say, well, what are you, are you saying? The church is saying, well, then do it our way. And that seems the same. I'll say maybe, <laughs> but when I say I want it my way, that's my preference. When the church says we're gonna do it this way, it's based off of a principle. And the principle is the integrity of the body and a belief in the resurrection of the dead, right? It's the integrity of the body, the goodness of the body is why the church has its rules about when it comes to burying the body in sacred ground, when it comes to even with cremation and not scattering the ashes. Now, Again, with that being said, the principle of, principle of the integrity of the body is the, it's paramount, right? It's, it's essential. Now, there was a time when cremation itself wasn't even allowed in the Catholic Church. Um, and that, I talked about that in a video where we talked about how disciplines change. Um, church discipline, right, can change uh, when we change in culture. So what had happened was originally, when here's the gospel going out to all the world, and Christians encountered cultures that as part of their funeral rites, they would uh, burn up, right? Burn the, the bodies of those people who had died. The, the problem wasn't that um, the bodies disintegrated. That's going to happen naturally. The point is that um, what they're saying, what a culture like that was saying when they burned a body up, is they're saying we're setting the soul free from the cage or the trap of the body. And so the church said, okay, Christians, that's not what we, what we believe. We believe that body and soul have a unity and an integrity together. And so therefore, you may not and must not um, give the impression to the world that you believe the, the body is a tra trap or a cage for the soul. And so that's why the church banned cremation. Now, in the 60s, 1960s, the church said, okay, we believe, we know that <laughs> there are very few people right now, maybe there are some people out there, but it's not the dominant cultural mindset that says I'm going to be cremated because I want to uh, free my soul from my body. Therefore, the church said, okay, well, this, the culture has changed. Therefore, as long as you 
treat the cremated remains, or the cremains, that's actually a term, the cremains with dignity, meaning inter the body in the ground, in sacred ground, then cremation is allowed. It's never recommended, but it's allowed. Now, <laughs> I, remember, I remember talking to one of my sisters who said that she wanted to be cre cremated, not because of any, any reason of like, I wanna set my soul free from my body, but because I remember she said, I don't wanna wake up in a coffin, like one of her fears, I don't wanna wake up in a coffin. I remember thinking, or saying actually, but you would wanna wake up in an oven? I mean, <laughs> something to think about, that's all I'm saying. Also, when they embalm a body, I'm pretty sure they make sure that that person is like fully dead, not mostly dead, but fully dead. Anyways, <laughs> back to how we take care of the body. So, of course, um, a body will naturally disintegrate in the earth. That's just what's gonna happen. So we believe in the resurrection of the body. It doesn't mean like that, that you need to stay intact or else God won't know what to do with your atoms. I mean, I think, what is it, every seven years, we, have, we go through, we, the body replaces itself, like replaces every one of your cells every seven years, maybe three years. Look it up. I'm sure there's a thing called Google that you can find out all that information about. But we realize that what God's going to do is, <laughs> He doesn't like collect every cell that ever belonged to you and reassemble that into your resurrected body. In some mysterious and miraculous way, the body you get back is your body. Even though the cycle of cells is X number of years long. And we got that. But what we do with the body, that's the important part. Of course, your body is going to disintegrate. But what we do with the body is we treat it with dignity. Always treat it with dignity. So whether that is burying it in the ground or it being burned and cremated and then buried in the ground, that's, that's the principle behind the whole thing, is honoring the body, knowing that, yes, the body will disintegrate on its own, most likely, eventually. No, so people have asked about, like, what about uh, bodies that are, like, you know, burned up uh, accidentally, or bodies in an explosion, what about Hiroshima or Nagasaki, one of those kind of situations? Like, again, that has nothing to do with how we inter those bodies. We, if we could find, you know, the remains of that person, of those people who had been killed in an explosion or in a house fire or at something like the atomic bomb, then yes, of course, you would treat those, those bodies or those remains, whatever you found, with as much dignity and reverence as you possibly could to honor that person, honor their body. But I mean, there's some situations where you, you have nothing you can do. That's one, one of those things. The last two things, two things, is can I donate my body to science? Can I donate my organs? And the Catholic Church says yes. There's, there is a, if you're, you're driving motivation, if the, if the motivating factor behind this whole thing is charity, right, is here's my heart, it's still good, I donate that to the next person who needs a heart, or my liver, kidneys, obviously, organs. Donate those things. Why? Because that is an act of charity, motivating uh, the whole thing, plus as long as the body is interred with reverence, ultimately. So you could donate your body to a medical school. We have medical school right across, I'm looking at it right now. Um, they have cadaver lab. In cadaver lab, those of you who are doctors or doctors to be, you would treat that cadaver with dignity. You would treat that cadaver with a sense of, of and in some ways you could say reverence, even as you are uh, cutting that cadaver open and learning about the human body. I remember at one point, um, my physician family, they talked about in their first day in cadaver lab saying, before they you know, cut into the body saying, hey, could we just take a moment of silence and just like honor the fact that this was someone's son or this was someone's daughter. And I just think like that would be such a, I know one of my siblings said that and the, everyone in the group was like, yeah, let's do that. Another one of my siblings said that and everyone was looked at them very weird. But I think it's a good impulse. The impulse is this is, again, someone's bo body. This is someone's son. This is someone's daughter. This may, might have been someone's mom or dad or brother or sister. This was someone's friend. This was someone, right? Even though this, all there is left is their body here. So yes, you can donate your body to science. You can donate your organs. Um, the last thing, I mentioned last time that we don't keep that, those cremains in an urn or in a locket or in any kind of, like you don't have a little keepsake about that. In fact, we're prohibited from doing that. Now, some people say, well, what about relics of saints? Great question, camper. Two things, one is, those relics of saints are kept in reliquaries, right? So they're, kept in, they're meant to be kept in holy places, in, in, in places that are kind of like being buried in a holy, holy ground um, or in an altar. They're placed in a holy place. They're meant to be treated like that. The other thing is the church has said, you know, there, there was this ancient practice of as a dismembering essentially those saints and having those relics of those saints. And the church relatively recently, but in its living history has said, yeah, don't do that anymore. So the church has actually asked us not to do that with any recent saints is to let their bodies be intact as they are. 
let them naturally disintegrate as they are, but let them keep them together as they are. So that's kind of one of those things. Now, here's the whole upshot of the whole deal. If even right now, you're like, okay, I got the reasons, you told me all about the rules and stuff, I still want to do it my way, that's really good. Why? <laughs> because then it reveals, it reveals this thing in my heart, and it's in, it's in your heart, it's in my heart, it's in all of our hearts. And that thing is, yeah, but I want to do it my way. Yeah, but I want what I want. And we recognize that, you know, that song by Frank Sinatra, I did it my way, that's the theme song of hell. The church is asking, the church, your mother, our mother, my mother, our teacher, the church is asking us, the church, the body of Christ is asking us, hey, when it comes to your death, when it comes to you being laid to rest, we believe that it is best and most reverent, the most honoring of what we know to be true to do it like this and to not do it like that. Will you trust us? And that's the big question. I can say, I could trust God. I totally trust God. I will do whatever God asks me. But what if God asks us through the church, do it like this, not like that? Then I have the moment of truth, right? Where I go, wait, is it my will or God, is it your will? He says, no, it's the will of the church. Church has this. Yeah, but we know this. Jesus said to the apostles, who right now the modern church are the successors to the apostles. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And so we know this, right? This is kind of like a, when it grates against us, it's really, really good because it reveals, okay, Lord, that's my heart. Help me. Help me to love. Help me to walk. Help me to, to be teachable. And that's this moment. Anyways, that's what I got for us. Hopefully, we don't talk about scattering ashes anymore or any of the other things. Okay, last thing. But my parent asked me to do this thing. It was their last wish. It was in their will. You don't have to do it. I don't know about the will thing. I don't, that's a legal thing. But you don't have to do it. If your parents said, um, after I die, I want you to rob a bank, would you do it? No. So you don't have to scatter someone's ashes just because they asked, to, asked you to if you know that it is against the, what you can do as a Catholic Christian. Okay? Does that make sense? Anyways, as I said, this is a long video for crying out loud. My name is Father Mike Schmitz. This is Ascension Presents. God bless.